We tap into his power that's inside of us. We have the power to resist the devil, standing firm. Number two, we have the power of presence. We have the power of God's presence. And in the presence of God, Satan flees. In James, it says, resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he flee. But, but I want to emphasize that it's God's power that makes that true. It's God's power that makes him flee. I mean, do you really think it was because you said to the devil, I resist you, that he flees? As if our power, as if we can walk up to Satan and say, my name is Jeremy Harper and I resist you, so you have to flee. <laughs> Satan's not scared of me. He's not scared of you. There's only one person that Satan is scared of, and that's Jesus Christ. That's the name he trembles at, is the name of Jesus Christ. That's whose presence he fears. And so James, in, in the earlier chapter, he talks about even the demons believe and they shudder. They tremble with fear. They hear that name, Jesus, and they shudder like on the Lion King with jackals. Say, say it again, Mufasa. <laughs> do it again, do it again, Mufasa. <laughs> At the name of Jesus, the demons go, ooh, not Jesus. I'm scared of Jesus. And so our goal is to sit with God so much that we get powered up, that we start to radiate God's glory because we've been with him so much. We start to radiate his glory. And the demons come up to us and they see that glow of God and that glory of God in us. And they go, whoa, I'm not going near that one. They got the presence of God in them. Amen. They got the glory of God glowing off of them. I, I, I can't. I don't want to touch that one. I'm not going to go near that one. I love this picture that I found of a, this little kid. Back off, devil. I belong to Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes, right? Out of the mouths of babes. Your main weapon, your only weapon that is worth anything is the presence of God in you. Is Christ in you. That's the only thing. They recognize the presence of God in us. And so we have the power to resist the devil standing firm. We have the power of presence and then thirdly, we have the power to remain steadfast. Steadfast. And this one's really, really important for those who feel beaten down and, and just ready to give up. Guess what? You need to hear this morning that God gives you the presence and the power to remain steadfast in your walk with God. To not give up, but to persevere in your walk with God. In 1 Peter, it says that God, after you have suffered for a while will himself make you strong, firm, and steadfast. He will give you the power to keep going, to keep going. There were two guys that flew up to Canada. They wanted to hunt some elk, and uh, they hired a pilot to take them up there in this little, this little plane to take them up to this certain lake. And, and they show him the lake that they want him to fly him to, and he goes, I can't land in that lake. I know that lake. That's, that, that's not big enough. There, there's not enough. It's not long enough to land in. And they said, well, we hired a pilot last year, and he landed in it. He's like, okay, well, I'll try, I guess. So he flies him up to this lake. He lands, and sure enough, it works. He lands in the lake. There's enough space. He says, okay, I'm going to come back in a few days. When do you want me to come back? Okay, I'll be back in a few days. So he comes back, and they, they've shot three elk. And they say, we want to take these three elk back with us. And, and the pilot looks, and he goes, we can't take those three elk. We'll never make it out of here. It's too heavy. He said, well, the pilot that took us last year, he got us out of here with the elk. And so he says, okay, I, I, I don't know. I guess I'll try. And so the plane took off and he hit full throttle and he was just about to clear the trees when the right wing clipped and, and they went to the ground. And the first guy wakes up and he goes, where are we? And the other guy goes, 30 feet from where we landed last year. <laughs> they were determined, weren't they? They were like, they were determined. They were going to keep trying until it worked. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. Uh, did any of you watch that movie, Rudy? You remember that movie, Rudy, with Rudy, 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 Rudy. Rudy. You weren't chanting with me. <laughs> you left me up here by myself. Rudy. Okay. Uh, it was a great movie, wasn't it? It was inspiring. It was inspiring. He was this little short, stocky guy, and his dream in life was to make it to the Notre Dame football team. He just wanted to be on the team. That was his dream come true. And so he tried out every single year. He would try out for the team. And I mean, they took take one look at the guy and be like, no, 
He doesn't have what it takes. I mean, you can just see he's too short. He doesn't have what it takes. They would cut him first cut every time, every year. He just keeps going back. This guy is relentless. Year after year, he keeps trying out. He gets gets on the team as a water boy, and then he, you know he keeps trying out, and he gets to know the people. And finally, I, I think just out of the the kindness of their heart, they they let him on the team and put him on the practice squad. They're like, all right, you've tried so hard all these years. We'll put you on the practice squad. And the last quarter of the last game of the season, they put him in for one play. And his dream came true. Like he was just so happy to be in that one play. And they, they carry him off the field on, on their shoulders, right? This guy was relentless. He persevered. He was steadfast. And we, we can win this spiritual battle if we do not give up. Amen. We can win this battle if we persevere, if we keep going, keep fighting. Don't give up. God can give us the power to remain steadfast and to make it through this season of life and make it through the next season of life. But we got to stay tapped into him, into his power. Amen?